when when the trumpet sounds <laughs> and when those that were dead inside shall finally hear the reverberation that makes them quicken, which means feel the shaking on the inside. It's not so much about what you see outside crumbling in your matrix. It's about enjoying a cup of coffee. <laughs> it's about the refinement of life and understanding the sweetness of divine alchemy. It's about how you cook in your kitchen. What's cooking in your kitchen today, Cajun Queen? Ain't figured out yet what for dinner? No. You had a fight running? Not yet. Not yet? That pipe has a faucet. Not far faucet, like far raw, but water flows, evaporation, condensation, because of the energy of the sun. Far raw sun, for a reason. To help you to see the sun for a season. So you can see the outer working of the great earth, the mother cradle of life forms here in this part of space called heaven. But though you're here on earth, I'm here to remind you that you got that peace of God in you. And with that peace of God reminding you, kindling you, you might be like a stove that ain't been put on for a while to cook no good food, no soul food. But today we're about to say, care for a sip of this good, Asset. <laughs> How do you break it up and break it down and make it comedic from the top of your head all the way down to the ground? It's time for us to have a an ascension comedy show. Remember? <laughs> mm. Them good old days when you step into the juke joint, you call a church and <laughs> thought about praying. Putting your hands together, understanding that it takes two to shake it up and clap. Oh, yeah, the music feeling so good. You stomping your feet and you knowing how to rock. Uh -huh. Sometimes some people forget where they're at. <laughs> oh, ooh. yes. When's the last time you had some good fun? I know it's been a minute. It's been a minute because a lot of those so-called preachers ain't reachers. They can't touch nobody with their words regurgitating all this allegorical stuff. They don't hand me down and heard. Yeah, we're talking to some preachers there impersonating, calling themselves pastors. I know, hit dogs will holler today, but dog flip backwards is your God. And it's time for you to get back into your God damn senses. Good dog, good day, good day to you all. You ready? You ready? I'm ready. I'm ready. Every woman, every man, join this caravan of love. Stand up, stand up, stand up. Let's put out the divining rod so we can tell them that we're talking the truth. And if they don't like it, that's just their business. Take a bite or don't. <laughs> Today, we don't give. Show me a yes, please. Yes. Yeah, and show me a no. No. Is we what we about to talk about today? The truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help me, Holy Booker T. Washington, but the Bible too? Yeah. Oh, it's leaning on the other side, but it's still a yes. Or, or the other side, yes. Do we agree that Mother Earth and all of the cosmos is going to be present here to laugh at this comedy show? Yes. 
Oh, we're prepared to give it raw and uncut and live and direct. Yes. Oh, baby. Oh, we're prepared to make Mother Earth gush some waters and say, oh, baby, you're making me wet. <laughs> oh, yes, that's a touchdown. <laughs> what we stay in the football. You can put that down now. <laughs> what do you say? First down and 10. Now, we invoke favor on everybody. Good, bad, or indifferent, because y'all on the earth, the sun shine on your behinds anyway. And when it falls, it rains and it pours, and y'all still get wet. So thank you all for being here. Good, bad, or indifferent, you're about to hear about the yin and the yang, because you've been dying. And here's some yin energy with some uh, yang twist. What you call it? Wu-Tang? <laughs> oh, Pootie Tang. Remember when Pootie Tang took that belt off and started whooping some people? Oh, yeah. Yo, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> and if it's tangy, go watch it and come back fresh. Oh, yeah, we think we're taking a sip right here. Today, we want to offer you a special. It's a special note of a healing mode that's going to take it like a pie a la mode with a little ice cream on top. Because I scream, you scream, we all scream for ice cream. But hey, baby, you know the truth and you feel it in your gut. That's all you got. Now, with all of myself here on earth as well as in the spirit from which I'm a spirit, today you fit to get the whole truth, nothing but the truth. Is most of them people up in the church even cognizant of what they're talking about in that book or any book that they read without interpretation? And the jury would say, no, they're not. Why is that? Because they're focused in the brain part that only deals with logic and prove it. And then there's an other side of the brain that's been prisoned by fear like a little inner child sneaking, going, please don't be me, daddy, please don't be me. So if you've been conditioned with an ass whooping every time, to think like a slave to behave, what do you expect to happen when it's time for the Spirit of God to blow your mind? Today, the question was, how do you rebirth yourselves and anchor your higher consciousness into your physical, biological, wineskin color vessel? And in the process of doing that, trip the switch, the safeguards that's been holding you here in the matrix. Neo, are you ready for Trinity to slap you with a little amorphous? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yes, it is. Now, this is an open call to any preacher who will read this or any good Christian that's on the low low been watching little readings here and there because your curiosity want to really know what's going on because your Bible can't tell you diddly squat food. Here's what I got for you. And it's really cute. It's beautiful. It's customized to fit your meat suit. When you heard of Yeshua, you heard of many different archetypes rolled up into one. Not that it's a fictional character, but it's a literary character. A teaching tool, just like we've taught you about Hardy Boys and Nancy Drews, a detective story of a great mystery that comes from galaxies far, far away in a land before time. Many of you are embedded programmatically to believe certain stories ancestrally because, guess what, even in your Greek pantheon, Put them Greek panties back on, please. Them Africans were still there. The relics and everything you see that you could take a helical look at all around still comes back 365 degrees black. Like your blood running warm in your vein. Like the iron 
or the irony that a black man and a black woman could come back like Lily Puda in the valley and take a Lily put put you back in your place. <laughs> oh yeah. Are y'all ready, ready, ready to do it? I have my sigil on for those of you who wanna play with magic in an old or young man's heart. I'm going to bring the trumpet now to show you where you're behind been hiding. But guess what? If you were one speaking the gubbly agape, agape, talking the agape love in their pulpit, I'm holding you accountable for everything you spit. And for all those you guided, misguided, parasliding, slip and sliding, I'm going to hold you accountable today because the scale of balance says here you are and you must pay at the end. Pay attention now, my friends. You want me to take it back to the book of revealing for your ass? Say energy. That is the word <laughs> energy. Acceleration. Oh, yeah. Because though you try to kill my messengers by ass, ass, in nation, <laughs> I'm going to break your language apart and put you back together with a little bit of spit on it and a glue. Slap you on your baby butt and say, cry, baby, and come back true. Now, I'm going to be like a red-letter Christian for your behind to show you, because y'all said only he wrote the red letters. And anything else in black, you just Bible, Bible and babbling, because you're talking babblicious, babble, blip, 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 blip. <laughs> so my first message in Revelations chapter 2, from the book of the revelation of Yeshua, a crystals, or what you call Jesus crystal, not the white guy, because Jesus just us, it's crystals in your bone, like the atom and the key, skeletal of Ra. I'm going to bust it open for you to see freely here give. Chapter 2 in Revelations. To the angel of the church of Ephesus, write, these things saying, he who holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks in the midst of the seven golden lampstands, I know your works, your labor, your patience, and that you cannot bear those who are evil. And you have tested those who say they are apostles and are not, and have found them to be liars. 313, identify you false prophets. I'm going to call you out. 313, you ready for that? <laughs> yeah. The sacred angel number for that one. And you have preserved and have had patience and have labored for my name's sake and have not become weary because you're still up there talking all that stuff you really don't know, but you took it literal when you should have seen the parable because Yeshua had a secret doctrine because he came through the priesthood of me, El Ches, the Kion, Melchizedekian, Lord of Salem. Nevertheless, I have this against you, that you have left your first love. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen and repent, and do the first work, or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. The first law, the first commandment is the law of one. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy mind, with all thy soul, with all thy being. You live on one planet and she is made out of love. You make love to get here. You make love, not war. Learning how to give love and repent and give forgiveness for giving is love replenishing itself. That was your first rule of thumb. And that is what I'm reminding you of today. Remember the first law. One more time, no more time. Out of time. And in the sixth verse, we have this, but this you have, that you hate the deeds of the of the Nicolaitanus. That means which I also hate. That's the Vatican for you. The, 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 the Vatican for you. There is the church of the whole Beelzebub, the old Leviathan their system that they brought in and have indoctrinated you for more than a thousand years was invented because of the wrath they had for coming down here, being thrown down to the earth. 
And if you don't understand what I'm talking about, look at the discoloration of the palm of my hands in comparison to my black and comely, burnt of brass and copper skin. Kara, face of Ra, mellow. Yeah, caramel, baby. Good, good chocolate, wonderful. And that's how, mm, see, mm, tastes good too. <laughs> Don't taste and see. <laughs> he who as in here, let him hear what the spirit has said to the churches. To him that overcomes, I will give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. A paradise is 6-6, six, six, that's the year I was born. The tree of life is your biological skeletal key. It's called your chakras. It's called your biological immune system. It's called your nervous response system. Your light illuminates your electricity that moves through your body, that brings you to a higher elevation. You've got seven of them that's locked, and that's what we call the seven seals. But I'm going to talk to you so you can know what I'm talking about when I talk about the tree, tree, tree of life. The tree tees of life. And to the angel of the church of Smyrna, say this, say these things, which is the first, as in the first letter, which is Aleph. And at the last, Omega, because the first three letters is Aleph Bet Gemil. I give you the milk. Aleph is the seed represented by the symbol of Leo. But when you look at it in that language, it spells my name, my initials, I in, the I in, this way of thinking through the six senses, what you call your inner eye, your hidden eye, your third eye, your eye and eye, the eye and the indigo. Yeah, when your ego dies, I open up the God in you, Diego, but your, die, your body don't have to die to get it. You follow what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. These things says the first and the last who was dead and came to life. I know your works, tribulation and poverty, but you are rich. And I know the blasphemy of those who say they are Jews and are not, but are in the synagogue of Satan. Now I'm talking to the old Jerusalem where we're proving no God has existed there for a long time because they took over the vineyard of the master and sold his children to the four corners of the earth into slavery. Mm. Now, if you wanted to blame on Noah, Ham, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, bingo, you had a New Testament, which was a new covenant. And even after this new covenant was written with your behinds, to replace the old covenant that was there in the old Jerusalem, y'all still came around here and stole land from the indigenous Jews. Did you know that the Native Americans all still practice Judaism? And they chant to the great spirit, Manitou, Wakantanka, that they call the bread and the meat of heaven, Adonai, Athatanka, Owashet, Adonai. Did you know you was messing with Hebrews, Jews, the lost tribes over here, when you try to come over here and steal the Mayflower? Should the flower may not have been born in your mama? And you think I'm gonna come here and just smile and say, oh yeah, you killed my son, lynch him on the cross. And you gonna get a pardon for your dumb mys ass? Wake the hell on up and smell the coffee, baby. This is a new day. Do not fear any of those things which you are about to suffer. Indeed, the, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison that you may be tested and you will have tribulations 10 days. Pay attention at the 10. Be faithful until death, and I will give you a crown of life. Because really, your body don't die. All of your ancestral spirit living, you have a kid, so you have another physical representation coming back after you. But then again, you have a soul that connects you back to the infinite. And everything that your soul knows, guess what? You won't know too. It's called the resurrection of the life. Though you were dead, yet shall you live. Can I get an amen? <laughs> He who has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. He who overcomes shall not be earthed by the second death. And to the angel of the church of Pergamos write, these things who, who says he who has the sharp, sharpie, the sword, the two-edged sword, the tongue. I know thy works and where you dwell, where Satan's throne is in the Vatican, and you hold 
fast to my name and did not deny my faith, even in the days when Antipas, oh, daddy, I love you, was my faithful martyr who was killed among you where Satan dwells. Mm -hmm. That little she-devil. But I have a few things against you because you have there those who hold the doctrine of Balaam who taught Balak to put stumbling block before the children of Israel to add and subtract and put little subterfuges in the book so you don't know what to use. You eat things, sacrifices, the idol. Yep, Easter time, y'all got the little picture of a skinny white man at a cross. That's an idol. Yeah, it is. You teach your children to do the same thing? Yeah, it is idolatry. And to commit sexual immorality. Look what's going on up in y'all churches now. Even the evangelicals, even, yeah, you're supposed to be even, which means balanced. Angelic, you are not. Evangelicals, no, you're not balanced. You're up in there selling children. You're up in there pedophilic. You up in there trafficking. And you up in there talking about bathing the blood of a little baby Jesus. And you suffering those poor children. Shame on you. Thus, you also have those who hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitanos, which is a thing I hate. How many times the God was trying to tell you that he don't like them people in the Vatican? Repent or else I will come to you quickly and I will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. I told you the double-edged sword was your tongue. Though I speak with the tongues of men and angels right there in 2 Corinthians 12 and 13, 4 Corinthians 2. I told you about the transformation of your inner three of life. Even though you were born in a flesh body, yet shall you become spirit. Though you were born mortal, yet must you take on the transcendence of all of your past lives to become immortal. Past life, present power. See where I'm coming from? Well, we ain't gonna make this too long. I don't think we revealed so many more things to you than you could ever believe. But guess what? There was an old school lady that used to be on that used to say it this way, and she pretended to be Jamaican too. Call me now for your side kick reading because you need a blackberry. I am not Miss Cleo, but I am the Leo of Judah. And guess what? I'm going to help you reboot you. I you like the Buddha. So guess here now. We have a beautiful sigil, a beautiful amulet that you will see at the beginning and at the end of this broadcast. 55.55. You know how we do. You've been seeing that number 5555. Come, call, email, PayPal. You know the information for the pantry. You'll see it there too. We will bless this for you. We will invoke it with the true name of the living God, the teeth of Ra, like the lion teeth. The sunlight that shows up there, Ra teeth. Photonic sunlight, photon. Tetragrammaton, like grandma, your old mama, with the hair like the woman, the wisdom of the crone. Yes. And you can only get it here because we're going to imbue it with the energy. And you see, when you order it, guess what else? We give you a one card reading. You know how to reach us. I am love. We are love. <laughs> Thank you for watching.